Homologous recombination underlies many genome engineering methods. It involves inserting DNAs into the genome at arbitrarily chosen locations based on their homology to that local sequence. In E. coli and other bacteria that lack efficient homologous recombination systems, this functionality can be enhanced by expression of lambda red recombinase. Lambda red is in common use for producing knock-ins and knock-outs in prokaryotic genomes. Mechanistically, the recombinogenic species is a linear single-stranded DNA, such as oligonucleotides, that is introduced into the cell by transformation. Alternatively, the linear double-stranded DNA can be provided, and the exoprotein of lambda red will degrade it into single-stranded molecules that can undergo recombination. Often that linear DNA is a PCR product. The method does not work directly on circular DNAs, but linear DNAs can be generated from circular DNAs by treatment with any of the various restriction enzymes. A very popular setup for homologous recombination in E. coli and other prokaryotes is the Dotsenko-Wanner method. It is a lambda red based method for knocking out genes in the genome. It begins with pretty much any E. coli strain containing the target sequence we wish to remove. The cell is first transformed with a helper plasmid called PKD46, and it's grown at the permissive temperature of 30 degrees. This temperature-sensitive plasmid encodes the lambda red genes under a PBAD promoter. Growth of the cells with the rabinose present will induce expression of this cassette, resulting in the production of lambda red and the enhancement of re homologous recombination in the cell. The knockout cassette begins with a template plasmid. The plasmids PKD3, PKD4, and PKD13 were originally designed for this experiment, and they essentially are sources of the chloramphenicol resistance gene for PKD3, or the canamycin resistance gene for PKD4 or PKD13. There are specific 20 base pair regions of the plasmid called P1 and P2, which are the sites where oligos can prime to amplify the selectable marker in PCR. These PCR oligos are designed to contain these 20 base pair sequences on their 3' ends and then 40 base pairs of homology to the genome target on their 5' ends. PCR results in a double-stranded linear PCR product with homology to the genome on both ends. The cells containing the lambda red genes are transformed with this PCR product, usually by electroporation. Inside the cell, the lambda red genes cause the double crossover recombination of the PCR product over the sequence homologous to the ends in the target. Because recombined cells contain the chloramphenicol resistance gene, they can be selected by growth on antibiotic containing medium. The helper plasmid PKD46 is then cleared from the cell by growth at elevated temperatures. This results in a strain in which the target sequence has been disrupted. As with other genome modification strategies, there are several ways to make them markerless. If the original template sequence contains FRT sites flanking the selectable marker, recombination of the PCR product into the genome will retain these sequences. Transformation with a, cell, a second helper plasmid encoding a site-specific recombinase will catalyze the excision of the intervening marker, leaving behind only a single FRT site in the genome. Growth of the cells at a non-permissive temperature results in clearance of the helper plasmid. Thus, the original target is disrupted with no residual modifications. dotsenko wanner is just one specific use case of homologous recombination. In some organisms, like S. cerevisiae yeast, Homologous recombination is sufficiently robust out of the box that unmodified strains can be transformed with PCR products like those used in this experiment to disrupt a gene. In mammalian and plant cells, homologous recombination is also fairly robust but is greatly enhanced by introduction of double-stranded breaks into the genome near sites of intended recombination. Though here we describe knocking out genes, this same procedure can be just as easily be used for, to knock in sequences into the genome. All you have to do is incorporate the desired sequence into the PCR product and it will become inserted wherever the DNA ends directed.